I am recording. Excellent. So this is day two on uh, the Federalist Papers, um, and uh, we'll just sort of name them as we go through them. <laughs> um, and I don't know. I start a lot. So how about you start? Sure. So we've got an array of a couple of the the latter half of the Federalist Papers. Mm -hmm. um, we, I guess, I guess it's um, mostly Madison and Hamilton in these ones that we're going to be uh, mm -hmm. reviewing, uh, defending different aspects of the Constitution. Um, right. So we've got like the, that it's a republic form of government is going to be one of the things. Um, the term of the president, um, right. the powers that, like, kind of the balance in the powers between the three uh, branches. Mm -hmm. Those are kind of the, the topics that we're going to be covering. Um, so the first one we read was number 39. Right. And I'm going to be honest, this is the one I don't remember as well. <laughs> um, I got to say, these are not the easiest thing to read. And there's, there's no, like... Um, what's the word? There's no like sections in the reading, you know. So yeah. it can't be like it's yeah. not easy to pick out like, oh yeah, that was the topic of the beginning part or the topic of the middle part. It's all just kind of you know a, a, a letter and a bunch of text. Um, I I will say this one. I thought this one. Um, so I, I I concur on all that you said mm -hmm. about the, the the style of writing, um, how it's structured, etc. You have to look for the argument at times. Yeah. But I thought this one was really interesting because uh, we get a definition of a republic and what it is to be Republican, mm -hmm. uh, not as a political party in the 21st century, but but just a form of government, which mm -hmm. I thought was really cool. Um, uh, and then this sort of distinction between so once sort of once the republic is uh, defined and that this new government um, that the convention is arguing for uh, is Republican, and we'll get into that. That then after that, there's this distinction that they make between uh, the federal versus the national. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll sort of get into that as well. But the I thought that the um, you know I mean uh, Madison starts out. This is uh, so the page two thirty nine. Set for the uh, sorry, the first sentence of the uh, second paragraph. The first question that offers itself is whether the general form and aspect of the government be strictly Republican. Um, and then he sort of poses a question at the beginning of the next paragraph. What then are the distinctive characteristics of the Republican form? Mm -hmm. um, and then he goes into these examples with Holland and Venice and Poland right. and England. And basically shows how the term has been, in his in, in, in his opinion, abused in those cases. Yeah, the republics, so called, but they're they're they're, they're not quite. And then after on page two forty, second paragraph, he even says he's like he, he then gives the definition, which I thought was cool. Define your terms, you know. Mm -hmm. So he was like, we may define a republic to be, or at least may bestow that name on. A government which derives all its powers directly or indirectly from the great body of the people and is administered by persons holding their office offices uh, during pleasure for a limited period or during good behavior. Uh, uh, I'll just end with this quote, the next sentence. It is essential to such a government that it be derived from the great body of the society, not from an inconsiderable proportion or a favored class of it. So I I think what's interesting here, and he goes on later to knock the idea of the role of nobility, that that that, that if you come from noble stock, mm -hmm. this somehow gives you um, sort of, you know, the, the pleasure of serving, right? Um, uh, whatever, in a position of power. But this one is... Uh, it all has to be from the body politic. It all it has to be from the people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the word itself uh, comes from uh, two Latin words, res publica, um, which means public thing. So it's it's owned by the people. It's, it's owned by um, the uh, um, 
you know, the citizens. So I think what this knocks is um, uh, just the notion of nobility. Um, this would also maybe not, this would knock some of the stuff we read in Plato, right? Um, well, I'm sorry, what, the forms of government that Plato rejects. Um, like oligarchy, ruled by the wealthy, just because you're wealthy doesn't mean you get to rule, just because you are mm -hmm. the, best, the best trained or most cultured, uh, like an aristocracy. Uh, no, that that doesn't follow either, you know. So it has to, um, you know, be from the people. It can't be a monarchy, can't be an aristocracy. All of that—that's not a form of self-government. All right. Offices during pleasure for limited period or during good behavior. Mm -hmm. Good behavior comes up a lot, and this one's an interest. I mean, it comes up that page. Up 241, last sentence, retain their offices by the firm tenure of good behavior, the bottom of 241, uh, um, the tenure by which the judges are to hold their places is, as it unquestionably ought to be, that of good behavior, which I think is sort of interesting in terms of what they meant and how that's applied. You know? Yeah, what's interesting is um, for a limited period of time, that doesn't necessarily happen in the judicial, at least at the federal level, Correct. right? So I don't know uh, if that has its own kind of thing. Or was that in the Constitution at that time, their office? Um, well, if if I am following correctly, the so I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know about drafts. Okay. Right. Are they act so because obviously. Um, a constitution's been proposed. Oh, sure. Federalists arguing for it. Yeah, you don't so know which one they're arguing for. I don't know which which draft they would be arguing for, but you might be able to pick out um, from what's said about the judiciary um, whether or not they were we, they're working with the draft that we have. Mm -hmm. Um. But the good behavior one is sort of an interesting one um, because, you know, there are all these ethics committees within Congress that keep their eye on the conduct of representatives and senators. And if you, whatever, if, if you are not doing something illegal, then you will be held held accountable by those committee, committee and could lose your position. Right. But, but in my mind, uh, legal and ethical uh, there's overlap but they're not the same thing so when sure. i think about behavior and also maybe like an 18th century view or yeah 18th century view of it i'm wondering if it is really like a person of character not just you haven't committed any crimes mm -hmm. right like low bar but that this is this is someone of good character to go back to plato almost the idea of a um of the, the the training of the philosopher king and his soul and mm -hmm. uh well you know be, being a just person not just playing by the rules um so because obviously there's a lot of squirrely stuff going on with representatives and, and congressmen you know right. or, or this people so i i think though to go back to sort of the this this element I think when he starts breaking down on 241, like the terms, right? House of Representatives, Senate, um, the uh, president, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, um, I guess, does he mention the judiciary? I it, thought it, I it, saw it say he mentioned the judges at the very bottom of one four, uh, 241. The tenure by which the judges are to hold their places mm -hmm. ought to be that of good behavior. Um, right. I don't, doesn't wait. Where does it, it clarify? Because what he what he ends up doing next is he segues. So it's sort of like, hey, look at this. Um, these 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 term there are term limits. Okay, that's different from uh, sort of you know titles of nobility, where you could hold that position forever, right? right? Or a tyrant um, who could just continue to um, stake his his own power over and over again, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I, I feel like this part connects with the earlier part 
that one they're 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 elected these are citizens okay mm-hmm. so the, the republican principle these are citizens and you know what it's uh this structure is a positive structure because it'll go against it or it'll check that whole idea of holding this office forever based on um yeah based on other principles based on non or un republican principles so I, I see sort of that connection there it's not to say that you couldn't repeat your office right right but once it, every two years six years four years right depending on what office you're going for you have to go back to the people and say to vote me in mm-hmm. so it's it, it, it flips back to the power of the people to decide who they want in office yeah and it's an system man. i mean they, they, I, not necessarily about number 39 but i think it's it's, it's that whole I, I feel like it's later we don't have to jump to it now well it's another it's another one it's the one where it has the classic line about uh if if uh all men were angels. Hmm. Um, it's just a really interesting uh, piecing of this puzzle to um, to not only check the the, uh, the 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 different powers within it, but also to check what the founders saw as as pro- mm, the problematic parts of human nature. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting from that level. Do you know? Where, where it's like, if you look at it, you know, from that perspective, it's, it's like, man, what can we do to curb, um, you know, individual ambition, pride, hubris, um, the, the, the raw quest for power? Like, mm-hmm. what can we do to check, constantly check it? And there's all these little pieces at play to do that, you know? I think even, even in one of them, it said, um, actually, it might be this one, uh, where he talks about the um, there's the 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 national well let me get this right yeah the national government okay so well you know um those three divisions right but then there's the state government and he says at one point that the that you have the separation both have powers and and we can get into this later but the one they both check each other yes and then He's like, there's a double check because within each of them, there is a separate, there's a further separation of powers. <laughs> so it's like, you know, um, it's like putting all of these hurdles in place. Um, so you can, you can, well, eventually get things done, yeah. but, but also uh, to curb certain forms of behavior to, or to, to handle them. Yeah. To, to prevent the Machiavellian prince. Yes, agree. precisely, precisely. I think it's I think it's even in this one. No, it must not be in this one. But um, but we'll we'll get to it. This so so then there's there's this question to what degree. So after this has sort of been like stated. And by the way, side note, um, and we've talked about this before. It's always interesting to look at the form of the argument, not necessarily always the content, but the form of the argument is appealing to other uh, currently existing uh, state constitutions right a lot in these in these papers that we read um, so it's sort of this appeal to hey we're you're already doing this um, or these other states that are part of this confederacy are already ha- have the spirit of this element um, appealing to sort of the um, sort of the American spirit as exemplified in various constitutions. Mm-hmm. Maryland gets a shout out. Um, in this one? Oh, yeah, actually, I think it's... Uh, oh, yeah, it's like uh, middle of 241. The this, uh, the Senate is elective for a period of two years, which is but one year oh. more than the of the Senate of Maryland. And but two more than that of the senates of New York and Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think then the question shifts to what type of um, how to put this. Um, once we sort of like clarified this republic, then there's a then, then he proposes the question of 
to what degree is it national and to what degree is it federal? I think it's important just to define federal. Federal is going to be like the Confederacy. So in other words, the collection of states. Yeah. Or or I think maybe at times state depending on what's being argued for. Wait, state what? State power. Okay. Um, right, because that's like their representation together, right? Yeah. Like in the hierarchy. That, that's why, yeah, because that, that's what, right, that's what, obviously that's what a confederacy is, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's interesting throughout the rest of the article that he basically says it's a, you know, different, depending on what level of government you're looking at, or what feature, um, like the president, the election of president, would not be, that would be national, right? All, would be, all of the people sort of voting it in. Um, but the, the uh, convention held for this constitution to be ratified, that's federal. Mm -hmm. Federal is defining it. We have a different notion of federal. I think we conflate it with with national right now but the uh, the, the the convention that's going on at this time that is a federal or if you will confederal organization right okay so are you saying that um national is like power from the top down whereas federal is more like the power we're saying the power of the states within the confederacy uh, so I think what's going on with, with national is this notion of, um, I think, I, I think it can go a couple different ways. I think there's the national, so let's, let, let's take the, uh, national form of government that's being proposed, which would be the legislative, the executive and the judiciary. Yes, they were, they, they, they can they have the power to make decisions and that will affect everything below but national as well in terms of a union for instance that would vote a president into office that has a national aspect but mm -hmm. in the in the, in the convention and uh, in terms of debating this constitution and finally ratifying it that would be of a confederal nature because each state has a representative representative um um, in, in the Confederacy, or, or God, Continental Congress, sorry, has a representative, each state has their representatives, and as a, uh, and they represent the state, and they will cast a vote for or against this uh, Constitution. So what they're doing here is confederal. Okay, so national is kind of describing the three bodies of the government that have power over the nation, and then uh, the the federal is the because there is this um, piecewise kind of delegation of power between the different states, um, mm -hmm. how they contribute in the nation. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give you an example. The bottom uh, or at the end of two forty six or on two forty six, the end of this paper, the um, last paragraph, the proposed constitution dot 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 is in strictness neither a national nor a federal constitution, but a mm -hmm. composition of both. In its foundation, it's federal, right? Because because that's what's going to institute it. Every state has a vote mm -hmm. to institute, not national. In sources from which the ordinary powers of the government are drawn, it is partly federal and partly national. We, we can get into that in just a second. In the operation of these powers, it is national, not federal. Um, in the extent of them, again, it is federal, not national. Now, I think with that second statement, in the sources from which the ordinary powers of government are drawn, it is partly federal and partly national. Now, I think he explains this earlier, that this has to do with, so in other words, the source of power, the source of the power of the president is drawn from the nation. It's not because the nation votes, all of the people in every state votes, mm -hmm. not the individual states. Um, I, I think he sees the Senate as being federal 
because it's a representative. Well, that's I need to be careful. Each state is sort of sending someone uh, from their um, how, to, how to put this. It's the face um, of the state that's mm-hmm. being rep- in, represented in um, Congress or the Senate. I'm not sure if he if he thinks that the um, I think he thinks the House of Representatives is more on the national side because and I think he makes a statement about how they're in touch with the people more than the senators are. Right. Because it's more like grassroots. And there's a lot more of them. There's more of them, but it's also like districts. Mm -hmm. So. um, So, yeah, I mean. The. The. um, I mean, he gives another example of national in the bottom of 245. Were it wholly national, now I'm sort of cutting in to a thought, the supreme and ultimate authority would reside in the majority of the people of the union. So I think, I, I, I want to say, that's what I was saying before, I think national is from the people up. So like casting a vote for president as an example. And then the uh, federal... Um, we actually, what is that? The concurrence of each state in the union would, uh, no, 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 it's, it's, no. So the, yeah, well, no, he does say it. Continuing at the bottom of 245, we can parse it. Were it wholly federal, on the other hand, the concurrence of each state in the union would be essential to every alteration that would be binding on all. Hmm. Uh, and then he says about the Constitution, the mode provided by the plan of the convention is not founded on either of these principles. Um, so, um, I, I, I'm, I, with all this said, what's at stake? It, it can't just be a matter of um, terms and clarifying them, right? Right. I mean, what's... I think what's at stake is on 242. He poses a question uh, from, I guess, like either real or imagined adversary. He says, but it was not sufficient for the convention to adhere to the Republican form. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was not. They ought, with equal care, to have preserved the federal form. Ah, uh, uh, I get it. So I think what they're doing is he's appealing to, um, he's appealing to all those that are, that uh, that that are promoting state rights and state sovereignty. That there's still there's still an element of that that coexists with the national component in the Constitution. I mm-hmm. think that must, you know, and, and he can't say it's only federal. That would be that that would betray uh, the Constitution. But I think I think I mean I'm not saying he's throwing a bone, but he's appealing to them, saying there's still this element where states have power. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a mix and it yeah. just depends, depends on what the question is, what the law is, what the situation is that, you know, the, the one, the, the one has power and the other one doesn't or vice versa. Yeah. So he's basically addressing the concern that the States won't have, um, power or as much power as they had in the, before the constitution. Yeah. Exactly. 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 Um, because I, I imagine contextually they have been enjoying this for a, a, a period. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously it was, um, uh, you know, threatened in a number of ways from Britain, but they still had their own, you know, colonies. And then as they're breaking, you know, whatever, as they become independent from Britain, they're still enjoying the sovereignty. So you can't just sort of like trash it. Mm-hmm. And and maybe the genius of the Constitution is to have this blend. You know, I, I, I don't know if the blend is theoretical, like, hey, it just works better this way, or if it's, um, it's real Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you have to sort of like, you have, you're dealing with people who still want some, uh, who still want their um, state sovereignty. Right. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I wonder how much... Um... Like, there, there are the checks and balances between the different branches, and then there's these kinds of checks and balances, which are between the people and then the representatives of the state. 
um, which are kind of different. Um, and I don't know if that was really, like, like you said, like, it's hard to tell if that was theoretical or if that was kind of an appeal to the people, um, mm -hmm. a rhetoric mm -hmm. that they're using. Because right. it's easier to transition to something that's not entirely different from what you're used to, um, mm -hmm. especially if you've earned what you've got already. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And also, too, you're, you're afraid of, um, uh, and rightly so, of some type of sovereign power, mm -hmm. of, you know? Um, so I think that's, I think that's, that, that's all legitimate. Um, but, but it is, you know, it, 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 my tendency is to think that it leans more toward the historical context of what people wanted and also what people feared in, um, with, with, you know, within their states as they're going through this process of a new constitution. Mm -hmm. Um, and we know there are state rights, you know, um, but there's that, that one line, which I, I, I mean, I, I will probably get to it, but it was, it was sort of like, wait a minute, like to what it was, it was sort of like this, this notion that the, uh, the national government, um, is a check on the state government, but the state government's a check on the national. And I've never really thought of it that way. Um, hmm. But, you know, and it sort of, it poses the question to what degree it's actually um, a check on it, you know? Sure. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, we can jump to it because it's one of the better, in my opinion, it's one of the better papers. Was this in 47? Uh, this is actually in 51. Okay, 51. And I'm on. I'm in the sort of middle of it on three, thirty-three. Okay. So he um, uh, context would be um, the sort of the distinction between a single republic and a compound republic. So the compound republic, um, yeah, there's a single government with a single republic, right? So that would be something like the crown a monarchy um but compound republic and he says in the compound republic of america so compound there is going to be there is a national level if i'm correct on this and a state level so in the compound republic of america the power surrendered by the people is first divided between two distinct governments and i take this to be nation and state and then the portion allotted to each this was the yes it was like and then we divide again to each subdivided among distinct and separate departments. And then what I take there to be is legislative, judicial, and executive. Hence, a double security arises to the rights of the people. The different governments will control each other at the same time that each will be controlled by itself. And the a, a brilliant line, actually. So the So apparently state can you know, uh, what's his, what's his language control nation, nation con control state. And then within each, the divisions control itself. Mm -hmm. This was the part that made me think of this like puzzle where you just were, uh, or whatever I can use some of your language, a program where you are setting certain things up that allow and disallow certain behavior mm -hmm. um this just to go back this this one is uh sorry 51 so um yeah 51 is definitely concerned about the partitioning of the power yeah uh, yeah among the different departments of the constitution mm -hmm. And I think, too, from what I know about um, the little I know about um, uh, sort of uh, British political history, is you have the monarch, but then you have a parliament. I think the parliament at that time was split into two houses. Mm -hmm. So it's not entirely uh, novel. Right? Sure. I think there's a question whether they were advisory. And the monarch could really do what he wanted. So, the, um, sort of, in, again, in terms of historical context, 
Um, we're going to have these separation of powers. What is it going to look like? Um, is it, you know, is the executive going to have all this power? Um, I noted a couple of times in my margins how Lockean some of the statements were about the role of the legislature being sort of most powerful. Mm -hmm. But it but it has a check as well, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think in this one, this has that classic line. We got to cover it. This is bottom of 331. It said if, um, uh, well, the context I thought was really interesting. Um, it says it may be a reflection on human nature that such devices should be necessary to control the abuses of government. And I love this line. This is really interesting. But what is government itself but the greatest of all reflections on human nature. And here's the classic line. If men were angels, no government would be necessary. If angels were to govern men, neither external nor internal control of government would be necessary. Right? The latter part makes sense because they're angels. Mm -hmm. They don't need to check themselves uh, because their intentions would be pure anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a very good line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... that's uh, very quotable, and I've seen it in places as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I mean, what, what? Let's put it this way: There's a lot about the separation of powers in these papers. What's some of your, what are some of your like responses to it? Thoughts, uh, questions. What are some, you know, problems you might find? Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> well. On this quote, I was just thinking, um, the greatest of all reflections on human nature. Like, what kind of great are we talking about? Like, it's the most important or actually the the best? Because those are different yeah. things. Like, I don't... Yeah. Like, it's talking about government in general. So, greatest is... I'm guessing it's, like, most important um, yeah. of all reflections of human nature. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, or I want to do... I want to do the best, uh, maybe as a synonym, like the best of all reflections on human nature. So in other words, like, you know, or at least that's, that, that, that's one way of reading it, where it's sort of like you've got uh, whatever, you've got um, you know, thousands of years of history that these guys can appeal to um, all, of all sorts, political theory, um, you know, history of war, um, human psychology, and then as you're as as you're pressed to think about it in a very deep way, you then are you're, you're then prompted to say what what type given all of that, right? Given mm -hmm. all of our intentions as well, and all the best things that we've done, not just the worst. What kind of government? Um, I don't want to just say is. Um, would would work best with our understanding of human nature the good and the bad sure so it's not necessarily like it's not answering this the philosophical philosophical question what is government because right. that's kind of that's more abstract this is basically basically saying what is government as we know it sure um, the greatest of all of the reflections of human nature right um so basically taking the best of everything we know and putting it together. Um, mm -hmm. in, in such a way that, that in such a way that the, the, in such a way that the government will function well mm -hmm. and at the same time address all, um, all of the advantages and disadvantages of our finitude mm -hmm. and our, our imperfections, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I, I use that in light of what follows about the angels. Comment, yeah. You know? um, so. And what's interesting about kind of the angels comment is um, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. What's funny is a lot of people talk about their ideal form of government and generally they look great on paper like, oh, it would work. Um, yeah. But it would—it's kind of like the situation. It would work if men were angels, <laughs> and at that point, you don't even need government. Yeah. Precisely, precisely, exactly. I mean, you've, I, I think what's interesting is, uh, you know, with it with with Plato. Plato's is in, his theory of uh, you know, justice, and therefore his, his utopia, his city, is entirely um, thought up. 
mm-hmm. you know, doesn't go to any existing constitution, doesn't, you know, uh, in it, it's interesting that, and we've talked about sort of each one having some take on the human, right? Aristotle, the political animal, you know, who strives ultimately for, um, uh, ought to strive for human flourishing, which is um, sh- uh, shaped and molded by, by virtues, you know. So there's mm-hmm. always some little comment on it. Um, but with Plato, it's just there, there's no real appeal to, um, uh, the, I would say, this aspect of human nature. Right, like human error. Exactly. Like, I mean, I guess in Plato, there's kind of the external kingdoms that that his state is dealing with and then like he deals with um like some aspects of human nature with kind of the the lie that they have Mm -hmm. um right but other than that it's kind of assuming everyone's working in a very efficient perfect manner Mm -hmm. right precisely precisely that everyone's gonna stay in their place um and uh and, and that and that um, because the uh, philosopher king has been so trained, or the guardians are on their way, and have been so trained with uh, uh, the virtues and contemplation of the forms, that you will necessarily do the right thing, and that it doesn't really allow, seemingly, for um, the power-hungry guardian, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> care about any of these things, right? But it's just, I, I, I really think the. Um, you know, given given that comment, you know, and and that there is this recognition of um, the, that human nature is being sort of wrapped into an argument for this constitution, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's the uh, it, it it makes me appreciate the separation of powers in a different way mm-hmm. than than simply like you know um, you know by default they came up with these different you know systems as checks and balances but it's like well you throw human nature there and it, it almost becomes like this is this is necessary to do um yeah. else it's else it's going to fall into someone's hands um that might not be the people you know and, and i and i think what i like as well is this uh the, it's the it's at the bottom of this same page um the great difficulty lies in this you must first enable the government to control the governed and in the next place oblige it to control itself which i think is runs through all of uh, these papers as it relates to the separation of powers mm-hmm. um enable the government to control the governed next place oblige it to control itself i mean it's like here's here's the thing it, it it reminds me of that comment about who uh, who polices the police, right? Mm-hmm. We all have the sense that the police have this authority, and they have the law on their side, and they have the um, the courts on their side. You know, uh, as it were, I understand you could do something illegal as a police officer, but it's like who polices the police? Mm-hmm. Who is what is there? And, and you know what? You can't have. I mean, you know, in a theocracy, you can say God, great, got God over <laughs> the human, but at but or it's going to be turtles all the way down, right? So it's going to, well, you have another set of people on top of that. Well, who's good? another set of people? No, you can't. So the genius then is to have it, have that individual power broken up. I'm sorry, the highest level of power, either for state or nation, broken up and, as it were, holding each other accountable. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would still say there is something above it. And that would be the constitution, right? Sure. Well, it's almost not like it's above it, but it's like that's the structure. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's yeah. a foundation, and then sure. it supports the fact that there are these different parts and different layers of government. And ultimately, what's beautiful about the constitution and the United States government is that people, the the people, are the core of it, and they, you know, make up all all three layers. Right. They're voting. They're taking the offices and participating in those offices. Correct. And, yeah, I think I think it's a really good um, 
I, I hate to say best because I'm <laughs> I'm always cautious that there's something better. Sure. Um, but it's a really good form of government in that the checks and balances do try to address all of these issues that they're bringing up um, with with power and majorities and that kind of stuff. Um, and then like having you know having issues of longevity with with rulers, um, they really seem to to try to address all the issues that other governments are having. Exactly, exactly, right. Uh, the, with with the monarchy, you can do what you want. Mm -hmm. You know that sole individual. Um, you know, and I guess you can do sort of like a bad monarchy. You know, let's say if it's an individual, a tyranny. Same thing. Mm -hmm. No no checks and balances. Um, the uh, you know oligarchy ruled by the wealth wealthy or even uh, nobility. Then it's not from the people. Mm -hmm. um but i think what interesting so so there, there I, I you know as as i was reading this and as we're talking that's where this brilliance came from like in my mind it was like that's great you just take that power and you cut it up mm -hmm. and each one of them um have sort of a different function that holds the other accountable while at the same time they're running the country right? mm -hmm. it's not that these three pieces are um uh, checks and balances to each other, but they also have to get stuff done. And that's, I, I think it's pretty genius. I, I will say though, one can ask whether or not, even within the system of government, would it lean toward any of those questionable forms of government? So for instance, like, um, you know, how many poor people do you have serving in the House of Representatives and the Senate? Mm hmm how many how many poor or let's say uneducated people are in the judiciary mm -hmm. uh, you know how many presidents have uh you know i know it's not part of the law but at least it seems to be part of how the system works have gone to ivy league universities so there is an element of whether or not even within the system i'm not saying that the system lends itself to that but it allows let's say certain forms of oligarchy um, or sure. flavor archy to um, you know persist, and I and I, and I think that if one were to like rewrite it, and I think we've talked about this before, of um, you know jury duty doesn't do that, right? Jury duty it'll just be anybody, mm -hmm. unless maybe you're, unless maybe you're um, a criminal or something like that, right? Or you have you have a criminal background. I'm not sure. So would I mean, and that's to me very well. We be careful. Yeah, it's very from the people, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to give credit, but it's very, yeah. So if you had something in place where, where um, I don't know, like, hey, it's my turn to serve on Senate duty. For the next six years, I'm a senator. <laughs> and, and, you know, um, and that could go for the, the homeless guy. That could go for, you know, um, uh the educated, the uneducated, uh, all genders, you know what I'm saying? Would that then curb some of the tendencies toward, um, you know... Uh, Imbalance of kind of power, who has it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's... But, but the... it would, it would uh, Yeah, that, yes, that. But also um, the tendency even for the system to allow for forms of oligarchy or aristocracy. Mm-hmm. Because they did that with FDR. Like FDR served three terms, and then they're like, "No, no, no, <laughs> you know, new amendment here. Yeah. We limit this to two terms because it wasn't specified in the Constitution." So there were things you could do to sort of, you know, curb a type of monarchy, you know, or the I'm sorry, monarchic tendency. Sure. Yeah, and I mean that's another beautiful thing about the Constitution is that it can make adjustments to address those issues. Um, mm -hmm. but maybe there's some that aren't as opaque, um, yeah. as that, like you're mentioning, which is, exactly, which is interesting. Um, like it's hard to say like how you could enforce something like that. Yeah. Um, like to, to, to purely have like maybe an equal distribution of people in the various parts of the government. Right. Um, I think there are, uh, 
Yeah, like, I don't know, there's something about this phrase that keeps echoing in my mind. Um, the government control the government, and then obliged to control itself. Right. Like, it's almost like the, the people themselves should be able to do that as well, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like should be able to control themselves. It don't, and it's it's kind of like a, it almost seems like it's applicable to parenting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, govern your children and then govern yourself to make sure you're not getting off off track. Correct. Right. Exactly. No, I think you're absolutely right. Um, I mean, the other thing I thought about too, in this, and this is a problem in uh, contemporary politics, American politics, is the notion of the revolving door. So you've got people coming from sort of business and industry that have a lot of power in business and industry, and then are getting various positions in government, not necessarily senators and representatives, but um, let's say uh, positions in the president's can uh, cabinet, and then they will exit back out to go back into industry. And, and it's not that it's a problem, because you because the, the one advantage of that is that you do have expertise, experts coming in, and that makes sense. You would want an expert to um, to be, you know, uh, you know, the head of the EPA, right? You don't just want, you know, your, your common uneducated citizen to hold that post, right? Mm -hmm. But the, uh, you know, even if the president was fully allowed to. Um, assign and create his own cabinet right so he's got carte blanche for that then there is the question about well why not do the senate and the house of representatives judiciary is tricky because you would want someone that's an expert on the law yeah but why do the senate and the house of representatives and structure it more like jury duty i i mean you could respond by saying yeah well there's still an expertise there where these people have to know the law really well right mm -hmm. but you, one might be able to come up with um, an, an, an interesting uh, solution to that. I mean, it's even something like you're a, you're a junior member. And so for your first year, um, you know, you have a mentor and you are studying up on the law, as it were, or, or you are sort of in a specialized area. Um, but not all laws are, are that of that sort, right? Um, I don't so know. can I... You know, yeah, yeah. Right. So one question that comes to mind is like, um, are you like, are we saying that people who don't want the position should have the position? Uh, like for it to be purely a good distribution. Playing it out. Sure. Just like jury duty. So you, you like, I don't want to do it. Doesn't matter. It, you know, it's a responsibility. It's a responsibility to do and you're bound by law. Okay, and it's and it would still be like the two, four, six year terms. And again, yeah, I mean, let's say yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be careful, and and you know, jury duty comes can come up again, mm -hmm. right? So it could be the case that you serve and then you're out, and then you know, five, six, seven, eight years down the road, you're back in uh, by the lottery. I, I you know, um, but I would say there are probably enough citizens you know that yeah. you would eat so um but so so, so my, my the, the term limit is weird because i would want to allow for some on the job training so the their house of representatives might be too short that makes sense um you know? yeah that's fair i think an issue that comes to mind and i don't know what criterion you'd need to have in place to vet people like i mean criminal records is, is fine and all right yeah. Um, but like, what if the position is just not a good position for the citizen? Like they're not able to maintain that. Like it's just too stressful. Um, you know, it harms them in, in kind of human ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not I necessarily guess, I, like intellectual, like, you know, like it's just stressful. Yeah. I would say this, there are exceptions to jury duty. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm to jury duty and you know you're a chemo patient and you need to have your chemo every day then obviously you're not gonna be able to serve mm -hmm. so as an example so i imagine that there would be exceptions to it um there might even be a uh i mean a, another interesting one would be um jury duty but in this case you can turn it down so mm -hmm. so that still gives them the freedom to turn the position down um, 
and then whatever the next person in line you know would take it i mean if you think about it what it would do is the whole idea of civic involvement would increase yeah now i uh, like that that idea of if they could turn it down because then that doesn't ruin people's you know motives exactly. or like early early careers where it's like they're really passionate about something there you um, go. But if they're yeah. in a position where it's like, oh, I could never get that kind of a job. I could never be involved because I can't put in all the work because yeah. society has put this kind of expectation on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then that like it addresses that issue because it's like, oh, hey, I have an opportunity now. Um, yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, what, what's interesting, too, is that um, you, you'd have to, So there are a lot of problems, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we live in we live in a, a, a uh, economy of specialists. So, what do you do if you're three years out of out of that industry? So that does become a problem, mm -hmm. right? Um, as you were mentioning, uh, but the I mean, one thing you'd have to do is that there would have to be this sort of like whatever uh, you know law in place that would say that this person. You know, and, and, and after a while, everyone would accept it like the myth of the medals, where it's just like, okay, they're out for three years and then they're back. Right. Now, and, I mean, and, does this go against um, liberty, though? Yeah, no. I mean, well, not, not if you, well. I'm just thinking, like, the core idea, does it go against liberty? Like, if it's an so, option that you can turn down, then maybe it, maybe it doesn't go against it. Yeah, no, that it would support it. The problem, though, would be the um, uh, the sort of secondary and tertiary effects. So, in other words, like your business, mm -hmm. and I'm like, great, got this guy that I now, I mean, whatever, I don't have to pay him, but I've got to, I have to accept him back in three years. Mm -hmm. So, in that sense, the corporate person doesn't have as much liberty as they presently do. Right. But the gain, what's the gain, you know? Um, uh, I mean, I, I would argue that there would be a pragmatic gain. You know, what's interesting too, actually, even with that, the flip side is that if you, so let's say that you, you're at Red Shred and then boom, you got to do your three years. Well, guess what? That's not necessarily hurting the company. It's hurting the company that you're not there for three years, but you now are coming in possibly with their interests. Mm. Oh, the company's interest into the government. Yeah, yeah. not mm -hmm. entirely of your own interest, blah blah blah. But yeah, so so you could you could. Talk, I mean, it's almost sort of like a company sending a lobbyist. You know? Sure. Um, so you you would get to share some of the company's interests um, as you are legislating. Right. So, uh, it, it's so hard though, right? I mean, because you go back to the specialist argument and all, you know, if someone's been serving the House of Representatives for 10 years, 20 years, I mean, they, they really do know the law really well. Mm -hmm. That advantage. But to be fair, every um, representative and senator has a staff. And not every representative and senator is reading, are reading entire bills. <laughs> right. So, you, you you would still have a staff to help, you know. Um, this is all said with that that the tendency of like, um, I'm sorry, of the, the tendency of, of going toward those um, those uh, poor um, or unwanted forms of government. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I um, mean, I guess it's it's you're trying to address the issue of. I guess noblism or elitism in the government mm -hmm. where yeah. that ball in society is kind of already rolling, already has momentum. Um, mm -hmm. And is it, should it still have momentum? Is that really the best or is that a tendency that um, we're kind of overlooking in that, yeah. it's, you know, it's an, it could be an issue for, um, well, I guess an issue that, a, a gover another government would have if it was pure purely um that exactly no i i think um i mean obviously there you know the the one response to whatever this this uh proposal would be well hey would, you know listen if you don't like how a senator is doing his or her job if you don't like how a representative is doing his or her job don't vote for them mm -hmm. and so it all comes down to the vote the people really do have the power but i think that when you have like career politicians you know, I mean, 
I, I think there is something about familiarity. If, if, you know, that person has been your senator for X number of years and it's not like they're the worst person, well, you're probably going to vote for them, you know. Um, and that's fine. You know, you have the power, but at the same point, um, I mean, I think the interesting thing about the jury duty uh, style is, boy, do you get, it, it seems almost more Republican in that representation mm -hmm. of, you know, the people. Yeah, almost. I mean, uh, yeah. it's hard to say because, um, so if you're only applying this to the legislative branch, mm -hmm. right, then I feel like it can make sense. Um, I don't think it would make sense if you applied this to the presidency. Um, sure. Now, there, there's, there, there are still things wrong with the presidency in that, um, you know, like you mentioned, you know, behind the schools that are commonly right. found, but behind, behind the presidents and um, the fact that they well, already have to pay so much money into the campaigns. Sure. Um, but it kind of begs the question. Um, well, I feel like there were there were reasons for the representatives to be knowledgeable about their environment and the yeah. kind of government. No, I agree. Um, I agree. And that, well, like, the voting, you know, would would supposedly encourage that people vote for people they want to be ruling over them and not, you know, someone who's random. Right. Um, there are also issues with that where, you know, majority rule um, might vote in people who have a certain tendency. So in our case, it could, could be that that tendency is, like, oh, well-educated or has gone mm -hmm. through these courses or whatever. Um which is different than like a random like kind a more random distribution of the population. Yeah. Um the I, I guess this, put it this way, the the um jury duty style or approach the advantage it has is that it is more democratic. Yeah. It, the, the biggest disadvantage is is that in so being more democratic, it 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 lacks the necessary expertise for the job. Yes. Yep. And necessary and, expertise could could either be necessary expertise, or it could just be the motives behind that person don't align with the Constitution. Yeah. Yeah. In which in which case it's like, how much of a detriment could one or five random people in these positions be? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, guess what? I guess the other interesting thing that popped in my mind too is what, like, what are your interests if you know it's just three years? Let's say, mm -hmm. right? like, how do you govern? Do you? Do, I mean, you could be um, as self-centered as possible. That that's possible. Right. Um, you, you know, it would run the spectrum, right? You could be dutiful to your community. And try to represent their interests while at the same time, uh, you know, introducing some of your own, but and trying to do your damnedest to be constitutional, and every, every everything down to just like, you know, um, just only only caring about your own interest or your interest. You know? Right. But but it's one vote. But what? But it's one vote. That would be the, yeah. the check. Yeah, there are definitely checks and balances, and it's like, yeah. can you? replace any given person in this structure with any person in the population and it would just it wouldn't matter because of checks and balances here's an interesting one too with the problem let's say that you so you you, you leave uh red shred for your three years you do the work there you, you you serve as a representative and then they're just like screw you man you are like a horrible representative <laughs> everything you voted for was like horrible <laughs> It, but we've got to take you back there's you no know? immunity like, yeah <laughs> the press wouldn't change mm -hmm. and we all know like um what the press does to certain uh congress people you know yeah uh, sorry not the press does but they get press <laughs> so, yeah so you don't get press at your job and that's fine mm -hmm. <laughs> so that would be like if you're notorious you know that's gonna have a problem but at the same point maybe that's another check you know that you True. wouldn't want 
asshole during those three years so you can actually go and get your job back you know? or, <laughs> yeah or, have, or maintain a reputation for mm -hmm. you know? definitely I, I think that I thought is that when you're dealing with this they didn't even imagine 21st century mm. uh, America but when you're dealing with at least whatever 13 colonies and the populations of each and then coming up with a government it, it that is tricky you know yeah because you have everyone's own personal interest and agenda different character uh different different senses of character um or types of character uh different backgrounds different history i mean it's all these differences mm -hmm. i mean some where americans blah 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 you know and then you're somehow with all of those people going to rule. I, I, I'm not surprised it's messy. Yeah. I'm not surprised it's slow, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it, efficient is what it is not. But, <laughs> but um, you know, representative, uh, based on the people, you know, those, those, those components are there, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, the question is, I don't know if we'll ever get to this, when will AI get into the government? <laughs> it's already there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and that's the topic for next week. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> it's probably a good stopping point. We start with uh, Supreme Court cases next week. Yes, that'll be fun. Be fun. Cool.